how many times do we look up at the sky, usually when it's a beautiful blue sky, a beautiful sunny day, we like to do that. The opposite, of course, when it's cloudy. But there's a striking study that has found that there's a climate tipping point that's found in the clouds. This is by Scott Johnson, Ars Technica. It's a recent study. We are not likely to see this happen, but it's still very sobering. The word hysteresis does not immediately seem threatening. It hits at a portmanteau of history and thesis. It's a dense read, perhaps, but those never killed anyone. But that's not what the word means. Hysteresis is a profound behavior. Some systems can display crossing a sort of a point of no return. Dial things up just a notch, and you can push the system through a radical change. And to get back to normal, you might have to dial it down five or six notches. Now, Earth's climate change can provide examples of this. Take the conveyor belt-like circulation of water in the Atlantic Ocean. Now, we've seen very, very inclement weather lately, and it seems to be getting worse. We've had record rainfalls, record droughts, record heat, especially lately what we saw in happening in Australia, the poor people, even the animals were suffering. Kangaroos had to find pools. They immersed themselves in the pools for hours trying to cool off. I mean, it's just terrible. Now, looking back at the past, you can see times that the circulation seems to have flipped into an alternate pattern regarding climactic consequences around the North Atlantic, and switching from one pattern to the other takes a significant nudge, but reversing it is very hard, like driving up the top of a ridge and rolling down into the next valley. A new study led by Caltex, Tapio Schneider, may have identified a disturbing hysteresis in Earth's climate, a shift in cloud patterns. And this is a, a shift in response to warming that could quickly heat the planet much further. If we were to continue emitting more and more greenhouse gases, we'd eventually end up running this experiment for real. But let's not let that happen. Cloud services. The center of this drama is a particular type of cloud. It's called stratocumulus clouds, and they typically blanket about a fifth of the low altitude ocean. Most clouds are formed because air warmed by the Earth's surface or forced over the mountains cools as it rises, condensing water vapor to cloud droplets. But stratocumulus clouds are a little bit different. The convection that lifts their moisture is not driven by warming at the bottom, but by cooling at the top. The water in this cloud decks absorbs much of the infrared radiation emitted upward from the warm surface. The cloud deck re-emits some radiation back downward and some into outer space. The air above these clouds are, is drier and absorbs much less of the outgoing energy passing through it. That means you can think of these clouds like a cooling, the cooling fins of a radiator. They shed more heat upwards than they receive from the atmosphere above them, allowing them to cool off from the top down. The cold air at the top of the cloud sinks, setting up a convection loop at uh, that water brings vapor up from the sea surface to the cloud deck. So what happens to this unique process in a warmer world? It's been difficult to tell. The key processes inside these stratocumulus clouds decks happen at a much, much smaller scale when a single grid cell in the global climate models, so their physics are not simulated directly. Instead, we have a simplified mathematical stand-in for their overall behavior. There's a good reason to think this prevents us from understanding the details of how they'll respond to continued global warming. Nothing but blue skies. To tackle this, Schneider and his colleagues flipped things around. They utilized a model that can simulate these clouds in a small patch of atmosphere, given a simplified version of the world around them. Specifically, they simulated a patch of the subtropical ocean with stratocumulus clouds above and a neighboring patch of tropical ocean responding to global warming. They did this for varying, varying concentrations of greenhouse gas equivalent to 400 parts per million of carbon dioxide, CO2. That's similar to what we have today. 
on uh, up to 1,600 parts per million. Up to about 1,000 parts per million, there were no major surprises. Things got around 4 degrees Celsius warmer, and numbers changed for things like water vapor and cloud altitude. But the cloud deck generally looked familiar. At about 1,200 parts per million, however, the simulated clouds suddenly dissipated, and without that shade reflecting sunlight, the world would be warmer another 8 degrees Celsius. You could imagine. Hot house. How is CO2 flipping the switch on these clouds? The researchers found a pair of simple processes working together in their simulation. First, warmer air carries more water vapor up from the sea surface, and when that water vapor condenses, it releases a lot of latent heat. That extra latent heat gives the air a little buoyancy boost, increasing the turbulent movement that can mix dry air from above into the cloud layer. This dries out the cloud deck and makes cloud formation less likely. And this is a diagram of the experiment. This is by Schneider and his group. On, uh, it was published on Nature Geoscience, and you can see the tropical column, the subtropical LES down, a domain going down, and uh, what happens at the CO2 levels at 400 parts per million where we are now, and what happens if it's at 1,200 or 1,300 parts per million. Okay. Now, second, the increased CO2 and water vapor in the air above the cold layer means that it absorbs more of the outgoing infrared radiation. Instead of pretty much staying out of the way and allowing the cloud layer to shed heat to space, the upper layer catches more and emits some back downwards towards the clouds. Both processes weaken the cloud deck, either by slowing the cooling-driven convection or by mixing in dry air. And in the model, the cloud deck just suddenly cannot sustain itself anymore, and it breaks up. From there, the hysteresis is impressive. The warming that results from the loss of these clouds amplifies the processes that broke up the clouds in the first place. Dropping below 1,200 parts per million of CO2 again does not switch the clouds back on. Instead, the researchers had to bring it all the way down to 300 parts per million or so to see the cloud deck reform and stabilize. So how are we going to get that down? I mean, we're not even down there. We can't even get that down today. How are we going to do it later? Now, what does all this mean? We're doomed to see this play out soon, is that it? Well, there's a good case to be made for it, if not optimism, at least holding off on optimism, a pessimism. It would take around a century if continued emissions growth to hit the equivalent of uh, 1,200 parts per million of CO2. Even the emission reduction pledges that have already been made can prevent that. But on top of those figures, the researchers note that other changes in a warming atmosphere could raise that threshold. Some other projected trends in circulation would increase stability of the cloud deck, allowing it to persist to higher CO2 concentrations. The model used in this study, which simplified the global picture to zoom in on one aspect, could not represent those processes. That means the exact numbers are not the important thing here. The primary conclusion is that this sudden change in cloud behavior is possible. Researchers will now focus on trying to understand it better. It's tempting to think this could help solve another scientific puzzle, though. Climate models are often tested against past periods of climate change. And to study the causes of those climate changes, that's what they aim to do. Now, the efforts to simulate some very warm climates, like the Eocene, that uh, was present 50 million years ago, have typically failed to get warm enough, though. To match the warmth indicated by geological records, models have required higher CO2 levels than seems to have been present then, and it could be that this is what the models are missing. A large temperature boost produced by a loss of marine cloud cover. Fortunately, striking studies like this attract plenty of follow-up work, so we should have more answers to these questions long before we feel the need to glance up and check that those clouds are still there, 
and hopefully there will be for a long time to come, and as would be normal for the world and for humanity. I'll leave links below for you for this on Arts Technica. If you'd like to join me on my Patreon account, you will hear content not covered by mainstream media. These riveting stories will be based on my research and I will state my opinions and give my personal insight on diverse and controversial subjects and world events, events not covered by mainstream media and not certainly on not supported by YouTube guidelines. So whatever I have on my Patreon, most of those will not be on my YouTube channel. Please consider becoming a member today. More of the, the most significant and important videos will be on my Patreon channel. Your support helps me to continue my research and keeps this YouTube channel alive. And we depend on your support, your generous charity, because we help economically challenged families here in Athens, Greece in Kapota, and we also help the young generation with university tuition and the community around our church. Thank you.